करोन हेलो गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स प्लीज कम टू इंडियस थर्टी टू इंडियस थर्टी टू इज फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड एज यू नो दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट स्टैंडर्ड्स इन आवर सिलेबस इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस स्टैंडर्ड देन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अदर स्टैंडर्ड्स लाइक इंडियस वन जीरो नाइन plus there is a reference of this standard in other standards also like indias 12 etc so we are going to quickly go through all the important provisions of indias 32 so are you ready so what is the basically requirement of indias 32 the requirement of indias 32 is it first deals with classification of financial instrument into financial asset financial liability and equity instrument so whether an instrument will be financial liability financial asset or equity that is one of the major task in this standard and that is what we will learn as we'll go ahead then the next is can financial asset and financial liability be offset for presentation purpose in the balance sheet so can for example debtor and creditor be shown net of each other in the balance sheet so that is the question we'll discuss and then this standard also deals with the treatment of interest dividend gain losses interest dividend gains and losses in the financial statement so our objective is whether a financial instrument is financial asset financial liability or equity whether financial asset and financial liability can be set off against each other for presentation purpose and third is what will be the treatment of interest and dividend gains and losses in the profit and loss account and socie so let us first deal with the definition of financial instrument what is a financial instrument what is a financial instrument a financial instrument is a contract so first feature of financial instrument is it should be a contract the contract should give rise to financial asset for one enterprise and it should give rise to financial liability or equity instrument of another entity for one entity it is financial asset for other entity it should be either financial liability or equity if this condition is satisfied then this is a financial instrument so what is the important feature of financial instrument it is important that there must be a contract there must be a contract so income tax liability is not a financial instrument because there is no contract it is a statutory liability it is a statutory liability income tax liability payable is not a financial instrument in a financial instrument there are two parties involved who is the first party the first party is the issuer of the instrument the first party is the issuer of the instrument the entity which has issued the financial instrument either it will present it in the balance sheet as liability or equity the issuer will show financial instrument as financial liability or equity and the second party is called the holder of the instrument the holder of the instrument will call it as a financial asset in the balance sheet so i'll give you some example to understand financial asset and financial liability or equity for example one party will show debtor the other party will show creditor 
वन पार्टी विल शो कैश द अदर पार्टी विल शो और इट इज़ अ लाइबिलिटी ऑफ आर बी आई सो कैश इज़ अ फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर वन पार्टी एंड इट इज़ अ लाइबिलिटी फॉर आर बी आई देन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन इक्विटी शेयर सपोज वन एंटिटी हैज़ इन्वेस्टेड इट इज़ अ फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर द अदर एंटिटी द वन हु हैज़ इशूड द इक्विटी शेयर इट विल फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ इक्विटी देन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन रिडीमेबल प्रेफरेंस शेयर इज फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर वन पार्टी इशू ऑफ रिडीमेबल प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल इज अ फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी और इक्विटी फॉर द अदर पार्टी बैंक बैलेंस इज फाइनेंशियल एसेट इन आवर बुक एंड इट इज अ फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी इन द बुक्स ऑफ द बैंक ना देर आर सम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट देर आर सम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच आर रिसीवेबल और पेबल बट दीज आर नॉट फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट एज पर इंडियस वन जीरो इंडियस थर्टी टू सो दे मे बी रिसीवेबल और पेबल बट दीज आर नॉट फाइनेंशियल एसेट और फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी एज पर इंडियस थर्टी टू और इंडियस वन जीरो नाइन सो दिस इज अ लिस्ट ऑफ एक्सेप्शन दैट इज on these items indes 32 will not apply what are these item one is indemnification asset that is amount recoverable from another party in case of loss indes 37 is applicable rights and obligation under employee agreement indes 19 is applicable share based award indes 102 is applicable investment in subsidiary associate joint venture if the entity selects the option to record on underlying cost basis investment in subsidiary associate joint venture can be recorded either on cost basis or fair value basis if they are recorded on cost basis this standard is not applicable then agreement made for business combination are out of the scope deferred consideration is covered within the scope of the standard deferred consideration means consideration payable at a later date will be covered insurance contract in des 104 contract assets and liabilities covered by in des 115 so in des 115 also we had covered in our discussion then lease receivable and lease payable at the inception of the lease will be covered by indes 116 so accounting of leases initially will be covered by indes 116 what about subsequent treatment subsequent treatment will be covered by this standard for example impairment of lease will be covered by indes 109 certain loans and financial guarantee contracts certain loans and financial guarantee contracts will be covered by indes 104 and certain executory contracts not all executory contract some executory contracts are outside the scope of this financial instrument standard and some executory contracts are within the scope of financial instrument standard so there will be a question on this part in the exam that whether this executory contract will form part of financial instrument standard so for that i am going to tell you some important hints likely question from executory contract executory contract means contract to buy or sell any non financial item which is needed for the usage requirement of the entity for example a company which requires cement may enter into a future contract forward contract to buy cement company which are suppose printing books they may enter into a future or forward contract to purchase paper so these are executory contract a contract entered today which will be executed in future whether this will be covered within the scope of this standard or not 
please reply whether this will be covered by the standard or not. So here my answer is first we will apply what is called past practice test like I am a teacher I have nothing to do with paper or steel or cement. I have the practice of entering into such contract in net cash settlement that means I only receive or pay the difference. I am really not interested in steel, paper, cement, milk, copper. Okay. If the entity has, then if the entity has past practice for quick buying and reselling of non-financial item, the other possibility is I buy and sell immediately. There is no time gap or no major time gap between buying and selling such non-financial item. My objective is to make a quick profit. My objective is to make a quick profit due to price changes. So I buy it and I sell it and I corner the price differences. Then what we will do in such cases past practice test has been satisfied. So one I have the history of net settlement. Second I have the past practice of buying and selling it immediately to make quick profit past practice test has been satisfied and I will account for such executory contract under financial instrument standard because I am really not interested in the underlying non-financial asset. I am not interested in paper. I am not interested in cement. I am not interested in steel. I am interested in making quick profit. So they will be treated under this standard. Second test is whether contract permits net settlement. Does contract allow you to make net settlement and the entity intends to settle the contract on the net basis. Whether the entity wants to settle the contract on the net basis. If the answer is yes, the contract allows net settlement and the entity intends to settle on net basis then also uh, condition of in one zero nine is satisfied and the standard will be applicable. Other executory contract are outside the scope of in one zero nine. Then what will be the treatment of such executory contract which come under the scope of in one zero nine or in thirty two? This kind of contract will be treated as a derivative contract, a derivative asset or a derivative liability which means they will be treated like a forward future or option contract. Point number E, entity has an option to designate its contract within the scope of in 109. So one more situation when you can apply 109, when there is a choice to settle on net basis when there is a choice to settle on net basis and the entity has an option, the entity is given a choice, it can designate the contract as within the scope of 109. So what is the difference between this point and this point? Both look similar. In this point, the top point, the entity intends to settle on net basis. In the last point, the entity has an option to designate it as a derivative contract if it has the option of net settlement. Now we will come to the meaning of financial liability. The student are wondering where we will get the notes. So dear student, these notes are from this book which is called fin uh, Financial Reporting Compact Book. We have prepared this wonderful compact book which contains the entire theory in very simple words. You can easily understand. Institute material is full of complicated language, jargons, difficult sentences. We have bifurcated that into simple sentences in small paragraph plus I have also given journal entries that is required to be passed 
whenever you have a question of journal entry all indias are covered in this booklet very useful for last minute revision you can get it on our website vino.in in addition to that there is a summary chart also if you want to revise your entire syllabus in say 2 to 3 hours one day before the exam you can purchase this summary chart book from our website vino.in very useful for last minute revision in simple language chart format this book is available thank you and now let us come back to the meaning of financial liability this is one of the little complicated part of the standard but trust me if you pay attention you will be able to understand a financial liability is a liability which qualifies any of the following four elements any of the following four elements again a highly tested area in the exam they will give you a situation and the student has to answer whether this situation is a financial liability or not so you have to check for whether any of the following four elements are present we will call it element so first element element number one financial liability is a liability which is having a contractual obligation so first see whether there is a contract income tax liability is not a financial liability because there is no contract it is a statutory liability the contractual liability should be to deliver cash or any other financial asset the contractual liability should be to deliver cash or other financial asset for example bank financial asset example bank bills receivable investment etc if there is a contractual obligation to provide goods if there is a contractual obligation to provide goods or service then it will not be a financial liability for example warranty in warranty we have a contractual obligation to repair or replace so that will not be a financial liability so simple test is the contractual obligation cannot be avoided the entity will be required to make payment in cash or other financial asset and it can't be avoided then the element number one is satisfied contractual obligation to deliver cash or other financial asset some examples of element number one financial liability is loan debenture trade payable bills payable expense payable these are financial liabilities your stipend payable is also financial liability okay now we'll come to element number two now as we'll go ahead the definition will become little complicated element number two says a financial liability is a liability which has a contractual obligation so this is common to exchange financial asset or financial liability in potentially unfavorable condition in potentially unfavorable condition so these are basically derivatives which has become unfavorable unfavorable means when you will settle it it will result into loss for you it will result into loss for you so potentially unfavorable condition these are derivative liabilities which may be positioned in unfavorable condition in future and will be required to pay in cash bank investment or equity so suppose for example you have entered into a future contract future contract to buy share at 100 rupees you have entered into a future contract to buy share at 100 rupees but the future rate is now 90 rupees it has gone down so this future contract will become unfavorable because you have to buy one share for 100 rupees whose value has gone down to 90 rupees 
so contract becomes unfavorable to you now element number 3 element number 3 is as we'll go ahead a little more complication will arise a financial liability is a liability which is a contractual obligation which is a non derivative in nature non derivative in nature contract is non derivative remember the second one was derivative which is unfavorable third is a non derivative contract which will be settled in own equity instrument non derivative contract settled in own equity instrument which will be variable in nature that means the number of equity share to be issued will be variable for example i have to pay a loan 10000 rupees i have to pay a loan of 10000 rupees and i will settle the loan based on market price of the equity share number of equity share to be issued will depend on market price of the share number of equity share to be issued will depend on market price of the share now tell me how many equity share will be issued if the market price of the share is 100 rupees then 100 shares will be issued if the market price of the share is 200 rupees then 50 shares will be issued the market price of the share is 1000 rupees only 10 shares will be issued so in that case we will call it a financial liability so the summary of this is non derivative contract where the settlement will be based on own equity instrument and the number of equity instrument to be used will vary then in that case it will be a financial liability and element number 4 element number 4 whenever any contract which is derivative in nature so element number 2 was also derivative element number 4 is also derivative but element number 2 was financial instrument which has become unfavorable element number 4 is derivative instrument settled in own equity instrument like for example a future contract or an option contract which will be settled in own equity instrument which will be settled in own equity instrument it will be recorded as a financial liability so a derivative contract like option future which will be settled in the form of own equity instrument will be treated as a financial liability except in case of those derivative which will be exchanged for fixed cash against fixed number of own equity instrument very very important so a derivative contract which will be settled in own equity instrument where a fixed amount of cash will be exchanged against fixed number of shares then this will be equity instrument but there is a fixed amount of cash and variable number of equity share or variable number of or fixed number of share against a variable amount of cash then that will be treated as a financial liability so what is the exception over here a derivative contract which will be settled in own equity instrument and it will be settled against a fixed amount in cash and a fixed number of equity share will be treated as equity instrument so when all conditions are satisfied we will call it as financial will any of the four conditions are satisfied we will call it as financial liability now the student is asking what is a derivative contract the student is asking what is a derivative contract so derivative contract means when following conditions are satisfied as per this standard then that contract will be treated as derivative so first is derivative means contract whose value will change 
as the value of the underlying will change. For example, index future. As the index value will change, the value of future will change. Gold future. As the value of gold will change, the value of that contract will change. Call option on Infosys share. As the Infosys share price will change, the value of call option will also change. Second condition is it requires no investment. For example, forward contract may not require any investment or may require a very low investment like option contract. You have to pay a premium amount which may be some percentage of the total value. Or in future contract, you may have to deposit some margin money. As compared to the value of the contract, the amount to be paid is very low. And the third feature of a derivative is that it will be settled at a future date. A derivative contract is settled at a future date. So when all the three conditions are satisfied, then it is a derivative contract as per the standard on financial instrument. So I'll repeat, its value will change due to change in the value of underlying. It will be settled at a future date. It requires either zero investment or very low investment. Example of derivative, your SFM syllabus, options, call, put, future, that is which are traded on exchange forward contracts which are over the counter derivative and swap contract which are example interest rate swap, commodity swap. Sir, what are these items? This you will study in your SFM syllabus. Okay. So dear student, we teach two subjects for CA final SFM and FR and I have recorded the lectures in English, full English and full Hindi. So if you want to purchase this comprehensive lecture on FR and SFM, you can purchase from our website vino.in. This is our website and you will be able to easily find out FR SFM by CA Vinod Kumar Agarwal. I Highly recommend because we have taken lot of efforts to uh, prepare this lecture, record this lecture and you can either purchase regular lecture which will cover full syllabus in detail or you can purchase revision lectures which will be uh, like theory will be fully covered but the number of problems will be limited. So FR, SFM, regular and revision video lectures are available in English and Hindi. Probably we are the only academy we are providing in both the languages regular lecture also and revision lecture also at a very low uh, price so that maximum number of students can get the benefit. Now the next question is when should financial liability be recognized? When should financial liability be recognized? When should be the liability be brought into the books of account for the first time? So the answer is financial liability will be recognized when the entity becomes party to it. When the entity becomes party to it means when the contractual obligation can be enforced by the law. So when the entity becomes party to a contract, then in that case, financial liability is recorded in the books of account. Now another question is what are the types of financial liability as per this India's 32. So financial liabilities are two types only. Financial liabilities are only of two types. FVTPL and amortized cost. FVTPL means fair value through profit and loss account. So at the inception, at the beginning, when you are recognizing financial liability, you have to decide whether it will be FVTPL or amortized cost. Falling financial liabilities will always be treated as FVTPL. So check this one. 
if it fits into the following financial liability it will always be fvtpl and if it is not fvtpl if it is not fvtpl then it will be amortized cost so which are the financial liability which will always be treated as uh, fvtpl derivative liabilities derivative liabilities will be treated as fvtpl financial guarantees and loan guarantee contract financial guarantee and loan guarantee contract will be fvtpl contingent consideration contingent consideration means consideration payable on future event you will study in india's 103 contingent consideration this will be always treated as financial liability and fourth is accounting mismatch this i will discuss at the end of this chapter so you keep watching this video till the end accounting mismatch so i will revise again only in this following cases a financial liability is fvtpl derivative contract financial guarantee or loan guarantee contract contingent consideration and accounting mismatch so if it is not fitting into this four then those financial liability will be treated as amortized cost if it doesn't fit into this four then other financial liability will be treated as amortized cost so let us understand the accounting of financial liability very important highly tested in the exam kindly pay attention so yes let us understand accounting we have understood the definition part now let us come to the accounting measurement part at the beginning at the inception financial liability should be measured at fair value at the beginning financial liability will be measured at fair value now what is fair value in the case of financial liability fair value means proceeds minus transaction cost so for example you have taken a loan of 10 lakh and 10000 rupees was transaction cost brokerage so you will say the fair value is 9 lakh 90000 proceed minus transaction cost fair value is proceed minus transaction cost now next some important points to be kept in mind if financial liability is short term in nature so usually your creditor bills payable short term borrowing which is below 1 year then these are not discounted these are not discounted no discounting no complicated accounting required simply the difference between the settlement amount and the book value will be transferred to pnl account at the time of settlement but if the financial liability is long term in nature that is the amount will be paid after 12 months then it should be discounted then it should be discounted fair value is considered at discounted value here effective rate of interest should be calculated for accounting purpose effective rate of interest means irr irr will be calculated so you will calculate fair value in the beginning you will see what are the cash flows you have to make over a period of time find out that discount rate find out that discount rate at which the present value of the future cash flow is equal to the fair value today and that discount rate is called eir or irr effective interest rate or uh, internal rate of return one more thing if you are showing financial liability at amortized cost if you are showing financial liability at amortized cost it will not be subsequently remeasured financial liability at amortized cost is not subsequently remeasured so to make your life easier 
if the category is amortized cost category if the category is amortized cost category the entry at the inception will be bank account debit to financial liability account bank account debit to financial liability account and the amount will be equal to proceed minus the transaction cost at the end of the year or every interest payment date you will create a liability borrowing cost account debit to financial liability account and this is calculated using effective interest rate this will be calculated using effective interest rate so opening liability you will take multiplied by effective interest rate that will give you the borrowing cost this amount you will record highly tested in the exam sometimes they will say that company has recorded the interest based on actual payment we don't record on the basis of actual payment we will record by applying effective interest rate on the opening balance any payment made will be debited to financial liability account to bank account and if settled in case of uh, paying in the form of equity instrument then to equity being amount paid some care we have to take is borrowing cost will be transferred to pnl account borrowing cost will be transferred to profit and loss account however you have to also see in dash 23 in dash 23 borrowing cost if they permit capitalization then you can capitalize it second in the balance sheet the financial liability will be treated as a non current liability or current liability in balance sheet financial liability will be non current or current depending upon the due date of the payment if the amount is payable within 12 months that portion will be treated as current and if the amount is payable beyond 12 months that portion will be treated as non current next is treatment of zero coupon bond or deep discount bond these bonds do not pay the principal amount only so these bonds do not pay interest amount only the principal amount is paid on maturity still they will be treated as financial liability because there is a contractual obligation to pay the principal amount they would be treated as amortized cost instrument and the company will follow effective interest rate for accounting of zero coupon bond another special situation is perpetual bond or non redeemable bond these bonds do not have a maturity date only coupon will be paid principal amount will not be repaid so whether these are financial liability or not so what we will do we will check the financial liability by how much is the coupon paid periodically divided by the market rate of interest this portion will be treated as financial liability remaining amount will be treated as equity so perpetual bond can be a just financial liability or it can be a hybrid instrument which may contain equity also so financial liability is the present value of the future interest payment if there is a difference between the fair value and the present value of the future interest payment then that portion will be treated as equity here split accounting is applied split accounting means we will have to find out how much is the financial liability how much is the equity so this is how perpetual bond will be solved now next question is whether preference share very important because of the standard on financial instrument in india now there is a big change in the accounting of preference share when you are in 11th standard 12th standard cpt foundation intermediate you have shown preference share along with equity share in the balance sheet but now the situation has changed 
preference share can be a liability instrument in that case it will appear in the current or non current liability section of the balance sheet or it can be a equity instrument also or it can be a compound instrument also depending upon how that preference share is designed okay so if preference share are redeemable if the principal amount the face value is redeemable then that part of the preference share will be a financial liability because there is a contractual obligation to pay cash if preference shares are irredeemable that means there is no contractual obligation to pay principal amount then that part is treated as equity instrument if preference shares are entitled to mandatory fixed dividend underline mandatory fixed dividend company has to pay there is no choice then mandatory fixed dividend payment that part will be treated as financial liability some more example on preference share you have to participate and answer preference shares are entitled to cumulative preference dividend cumulative fixed dividend i will give you 100 rupees if you give me correct answer preference share are entitled to cumulative fixed dividend whether this uh, entitlement to cumulative fixed dividend is a financial liability or equity whether it is financial liability or equity whether it is a financial liability or equity now the students are thinking it is a financial liability but the answer is it is equity why because company may not pay company can keep on deferring deferring forever okay company can keep on deferring it that means there is no contractual or mandatory obligation to pay it will just keep on accumulating so it will be treated as equity next question yes please reply preference shares entitled to non cumulative fixed dividend non cumulative means it will not accumulate so that will also be treated as equity instrument okay question for you this can be exam question whether falling preference shares are equity or liability third preference shares are entitled to dividend linked with ordinary share that is if dividend is paid to ordinary share then dividend will be paid to preference share also is it liability or equity is it liability or equity the answer is equity because dividend payment on equity share is not obligatory you can indefinitely postpone the payment of dividend on equity share and therefore you have indefinitely postponed the payment of preference share next question preference shares are convertible into underline fixed number of share if preference shares are convertible into a fixed number of share that means fixed cash against fixed number of share then that part is treated as equity instrument if preference shares are convertible into variable number of equity share so here fixed cash was received but variable number of shares will be issued so then that part is called financial liability if preference share is redeemable and dividend is non cumulative so this part is liability and this part is equity so a instrument which has both the features of equity and liability such instrument is called compound financial instrument such instrument is called compound financial instrument so if a preference share is redeemable and the dividend is non cumulative so there are two element one is the redemption of the principal amount which cannot be uh, uh, avoided so liability but dividend can be avoided so which is equity equity plus liability it is called compound financial instrument another important question for exam purpose could be FCCB. FCCB means foreign currency convertible bond. 
तो डियर स्टूडेंट इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली सब्सक्राइब टू दिस यूट्यूब चैनल ए एस फाउंडेशन प्लीज इमीडिएटली सब्सक्राइब एंड ऑल्सो शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू कम आउट विथ मोर वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन एफ आर शॉर्ट रिविजन वी आर इन ऑलमोस्ट वन आवर ऑलमोस्ट वन आवर वी विल बी एबल टू रिवाइज वन स्टैंडर्ड इन अ डे सो नाउ एन इम्पॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन इज एफ सी सी बी इट इज अ कार वाउट अ कार वाउट मीन्स अ मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन इन डी एस एंड आई एफ आर एस सो एफ सी सी बी आर ट्रीटेड डिफरेंटली इन आवर स्टैंडर्ड इन डी एस थर्टी टू एंड आई एफ आर एस स्टैंडर्ड नंबर आई एस थर्टी टू now whenever a company issues bond which is a foreign currency convertible bond there is an equity conversion option or right that means the holder will get a certain number of equity share holder will get a certain number of fixed number of own equity share and these bonds were issued in foreign exchange these bonds were issued in foreign exchange so this will come under the definition of a non derivative contract element number 3 of financial liability as per indias 32 it is a non derivative contract which will be settled in fixed number of own equity share a non derivative contract which will be settled in fixed number of own equity share as per our indias 32 if it is settled in fixed number of own equity share then it is equity but what the international standard 32 says the international standard 32 says okay you are issuing a fixed number of equity share but the amount of cash is not fixed because the foreign exchange rate is changing as the foreign exchange rate is changing the consideration is not fixed number of shares are fixed consideration is not fixed and therefore we will call that means ifrs will call it as a financial liability the ifrs calls it as a financial liability so this was about financial liability and equity now we'll deal with what is financial asset so just for your information in days 32 the major focus is on financial liability and equity and in indes 109 the focus would be more on financial asset but in the standard indes 32 we'll just have a quick discussion about the definition of financial asset okay a financial asset has following six element 1 2 3 4 5 6 if any of the six elements are present if any of the six elements are present then we will call it as a financial asset cash cash by definition is a financial asset because rbi has issued the currency note so financial asset for you and liability of the rbi then equity instrument of another entity if you are holding equity instrument equity share for you it is a financial asset for the other party it is equity then contractual right it should be a contractual right to receive cash or other financial asset the student will remember this was element number 1 in financial liability where it was written a contractual obligation to pay cash or other financial asset so this is the way to remember except the first and the second one the remaining four are similar to the four elements you have studied in financial liability fourth point is it is a contractual right to exchange financial asset or financial liability in potentially favorable condition these are derivative so for one party 
a derivative would be a financial asset and for the other party derivative would be a financial liability because for one party when the derivative turns favorable for the other party the derivative turns unfavorable the next element number 5 contract which will be settled in own share which are non derivative in nature and the entity will obtain variable number of shares similar to element number 3 of financial liability non derivative contract which will be settled in variable number of own equity shares and the last one is contract will be settled in own share that are derivative in nature and which will be settled in other than fixed cash for fixed number of share so these are exactly reverse the last one is non derivative contract which will be settled in very vari uh, variable number of equity share or variable cash but not fixed cash against fixed number of shares if any of these six elements are present then that contract will be a financial asset and the entity will apply in days 32 and in days 109 for accounting measurement recognition and in days 107 for disclosure purpose now what is the meaning of equity what is the meaning of equity we have seen financial liability four elements are there we have seen some special cases of financial liability we have seen financial asset there are six element more about financial asset in another standard more about financial asset in another standard in days 109 now next is the definition of equity okay one student is asking example of point number 4 and 5 point number 4 example is suppose you are holding a future contract and you have long position you have bought future and the price has gone up then it is favorable for you okay and contract which can be settled in own share are non derivative in nature and will be obtained variable number of share so for example some loan is given to other party and it will be settled by giving back to you your own share but the number of share will be issued will be based on market value of the share so if i have given you a loan of 10000 and you are going to return my share but the number will be based on market price so i am going to get variable number of shares so that is a non derivative contract settled in variable number of own share right we'll come to definition of equity equity shareholder is the last person in the queue suppose this is the queue which starts from here this is the last person in that queue that is equity holder a contract that evidences residual interest in the assets of the equity after deducting all the liability is called equity that means assets minus liabilities first the asset will be used to pay all other liabilities and whatever is remaining is called equity they have a residual interest they are the last person to receive their amount so now the question is what are the financial instrument or components of financial instrument which will be treated as equity one is ordinary share don't write equity share write ordinary ordinary share means no preference of any kind no preference of any kind whether it is payment of dividend or redemption or anything then it is called ordinary share ordinary shares are equity instrument then second is those instrument or component which pass fixed test those instrument or component which pass fixed test means fixed number of cash will be received against fixed number of equity shares fixed cash fixed equity share is equity instrument 
those instrument or component which passes fixed for fixed test. So this will be a non-derivative contract and this will be a derivative contract that means fixed cash and fixed number of equity share and then there are deemed equity which is given in para 16a to 16d this I will discuss later. Deemed equity means they have the feature of financial liability and they have the feature of equity also. So the standard says you please call them deemed equity only and they will be treated as equity instrument. So this we will discuss later. So if an instrument has feature of both financial liability and equity, if an instrument have feature of both financial liability as well as it qualifies for deemed equity, deemed equity then the standard says it will be deemed as equity instrument so like for example we'll discuss after some time conditions for deemed equity put putable instrument what is a putable instrument the investor can surrender the bond before maturity and can get cash that is putable instrument or instrument which obligates to deliver pro rata share of net asset on liquidation. That means the holder of the instrument will get pro rata share in net asset but at the time of liquidation. So he is getting cash also but that cash is paid at the time of liquidation. Such instruments are treated as deemed equity. Second condition is such instruments are most subordinated instrument on liquidation. Most subordinated instrument on liquidation that means they will be paid after all other liabilities have been paid. Such instruments are entitled to share in net asset only. So this instrument will get share in net asset and they should not have any limit. So whatever is the net asset they will get a share in that which can be very high very low then such instruments should have identical features and these instruments have no other right like right to convert or any other special redemption right no special right attached to such instrument total cash outflow on such instrument should be based on profit and loss of the entity. Cash outflow on such instrument is based on profit and loss of the entity and point number G entity should not have another contract which is not at arm's length with such instrument holder. The last line probably is not appearing on the screen that means there should not be any other contract with the same holder which is not at arm's length. So that means there should not be the benefit transferred in any other form. If these conditions are present then the instrument will be treated as deemed equity and will be accounted as equity instrument not as a debt instrument. Another question is set off of financial asset against financial liabilities. Can financial asset and financial liability be set off against each other for presentation purpose? The answer is yes if two conditions are satisfied. Condition number one is there is a legally enforceable right to set them off and condition number two is the ent entity intends to settle on the net basis. There must be legally enforceable right. The law of the land must allow net settlement. If you have an importer and exporter in foreign country then the law does not allow you to settle on net basis from importer you will get money to exporter you have to pay money separately but suppose this debtor and creditor is within the country then you can do the set off but at the same time the party must intend to settle on net basis or even if not on net basis assets and liabilities are settled simultaneously that means at same point of time one party will receive and one party will pay okay now next is treasury shares what we call buyback of own shares in india we call it more popularly buyback of own share 
but in foreign countries when you buy back own share they are called treasury shares in some country they allow you to hold your own shares also so the shares which are bought back are called treasury share whenever entity receives or buys back its own share then what we will do accounting treatment we will cancel the equity it is cancellation of equity reduce your equity profit or loss will not be recognized in p and l account profit and loss will not be recognized in p and l account rather it will be adjusted in equity only consideration paid or received will be recognized directly in equity such treasury shares may be acquired and held by the entity or by the members of the consolidated group sometime a group member may acquire share in another group another member in the group one group member may acquire share in another group member then at the time of consolidation they will be cancelled the investment in the equity share will be cancelled and the share capital will also be cancelled so while preparing consolidated financial statement consideration for treasury shares acquired and held by other members of consolidated group is deducted from equity institute has so far not asked question on treasury shares what is the treatment of dividend interest if the dividend or interest is paid on financial liability it is treated as expense if the dividend or interest is received on financial asset it will be treated as income in pnl account if any transaction cost on equity will be incurred like issue expense then it will not be recognized in pnl account it will be adjusted directly in equity for example share issue expenses but if you incur transaction cost on equity and the equity instrument is not issued then it will be written off in profit and loss account one important thing equity is never remeasured equity is never remeasured some examples of income and expense interest payment on bond is expense is expense will go to pnl account dividend on preference share which is classified as a financial liability is an expense pnl account gain and losses with redemption or refinancing an instrument classified as a financial liability is an expense which will go to pnl account gain and loss relating to carrying amount of an instrument which is a financial liability will be transferred to profit and loss account so the summary is if the instrument is classified as a financial liability the corresponding interest dividend gain loss will be transferred to profit and loss account okay but if the instrument is classified as equity if the instrument is classified as equity then the dividend payment will be adjusted within equity then you will directly adjust in socie you will reduce from reserve in socie similarly if there is any incremental directly attributable cost incurred on issue of equity instrument already discussed like transaction fees regulatory fees they will be adjusted directly in equity when i say directly adjusted in equity it means it will be adjusted against reserve and surplus items like general reserve or retained earning in equity one more important part is compound instrument okay so you will not be able to see the heading but i will explain now we are going to discuss what is called compound instrument very very important 
okay very very important when you go to exam read this part i'll just tell you this is the book called financial reporting compact book unique book you will find only on our website vino.in and it covers your entire indias in very simple language very useful for ca student cma student even those who have qualified it qualified the exam they can refer this book one stop solution for indias so accounting treatment of financial liability under amortized cost method when we are given a question we need to check step 1 whether it is a pure financial liability or it is a hybrid instrument now how do we know whether it is a hybrid instrument a hybrid instrument is also called compound financial instrument and it will have two components component number 1 financial liability and second component is equity financial liability component will be accounted as per the standard applicable for financial liability equity is not remeasured if the instrument has an option to convert into share if any problem contains an option to convert into share then it means it is a hybrid instrument case 1 see what kind of question can be asked if the principal amount is payable on maturity in cash and coupons are paid periodically so there is only coupon payment and principal payment but principal is paid in cash on maturity then it is a pure financial liability then it is a pure financial liability if coupons are paid periodically and principal is redeemed by issue of fixed number of equity share as as we have studied today fixed number of equity share means equity component then the interest portion is liability and the redemption portion which is in fixed number of equity share is equity therefore a combination of liability and equity is a compound financial instrument case number 3 if coupons are paid periodically this portion will be liability and there is an option to redeem in cash or fixed number of share and there is an option also to redeem in cash or fixed number of share so if the holder decides to get cash company has no option but to pay him cash or there can be a fixed number of equity share to be issued so the holder may demand a fixed number of equity share to be issued then such instrument is called cfi compound financial instrument because there is an option to issue fixed number of equity share so when there is an option embedded in the instrument under which fixed number of equity share will be issued that portion becomes a compound financial instrument so what we have to do because now it is a hybrid instrument a compound instrument i have to sp split the liability portion and the equity portion because the accounting treatment of liability portion is different from the accounting treatment of equity portion so we will have to now identify how much is the liability component and how much is the equity component to find out the liability component i have to check what is the contractual obligation to pay cash what is that amount of cash which we cannot avoid second what is the contractual obligation to pay variable number of own share variable this portion is financial liability and what is the contractual obligation which cannot be avoided so this portion is financial liability component then identify the discount rate to be used in split accounting 
बिकॉज द कैश फ्लोज विल टेक प्लेस इन फ्यूचर पीरियड आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू टू फाइंड आउट द लाइबिलिटी पोर्शन सो वट आई डू आई विल सी वट इज द मार्केट रेट फॉर सिमिलर इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट रेट विल बी यूज which can be mybor libor or any such rate the present value of the future cash flow is financial liability then what is equity as you have studied equity is the residual interest so from the proceeds but without transaction cost very important transaction cost i will tell you separately i will not deduct transaction cost here because if i deduct here the entire transaction cost gets allocated only to the equity part only one instrument but transaction cost needs to be apportioned so i will take only proceed without transaction cost minus financial liability we have computed in the step 4 and that is equity so in the exam two types of questions are asked one is with transaction cost one is without transaction cost if it is without transaction cost then it is very easy we have got equity portion and liability portion but if there is a transaction cost if there is transaction cost for issue of this instrument then it will be allocated to financial liability and equity so what will be the ratio for financial liability this is the ratio for equity this is the ratio so for example this may be 9 lakh this may be 1 lakh so if there is any transaction cost it will be allocated in the ratio of 9 is to 1 so we we will deduct the transaction cost from liability and equity so my financial liability will become the amount calculated in the step 4 which was present value of future cash flow minus transaction cost allocated now there will be a problem what is the problem the financial liability you have computed in step 4 that figure will change that figure will change because you have deducted transaction cost so what you will have to do in such case you will have to recalculate irr you have to recalculate irr based on revised value of financial liability so this is very very important many time the student forget to recalculate irr in case of compound instrument where you have transaction cost so accounting treatment now initial recognition bank account debit proceed less transaction cost because you will receive net amount to financial liability as we have computed in step 7 and to equity that means step 5 amount minus allocation of transaction cost so this will be my initial entry equity will be reported in soi equity will be reported as soi as in socie as component of equity what about subsequent accounting if financial liability is amortized cost instrument its fair value will not change and as you know equity is not fair valued again after initial recognition then as usual we will record the borrowing cost account debit based on effective interest to bank account the payment made and to financial liability will adjust the balancing figure some student prefer to pass two entries so you can pass two entries separately also first entry you can pass borrowing cost to financial liability that is calculated based on effective interest rate and whatever payment you will make you will pass the entry financial liability account debit to bank whatever borrowing cost you have incurred here this figure will go to pnl account as an expense unless capitalized under india's 23 student make a mistake 
the payment that they are making that they transfer to PNL account. No, that was CA intermediate, that was foundation 12 standard. In final, you have become a bigger entity now. You are a more learned person now. Now see the presentation in the balance sheet. Non-current liability, financial liability borrowing, that component of borrowing which is due after 12 months will come under non-current liability and that portion which will be due within 12 months will be treated as current liabilities. Let us come to the settlement date. Let us come to the settlement date. Conversion into equity share. Suppose the instrument requires mandatory conversion into equity share. Fixed number of equity share have to be issued. Equity account debit which you had credited earlier and from that equity account you credit share capital and credit securities premium. If variable number of shares have to be issued, if variable number of shares have to be issued, that means the instrument was earlier treated as financial liability because variable number of share to be issued means the instrument is a financial liability. So financial liability account debit to share capital and excess amount to securities premium. That was mandatory conversion. Now optional conversion. Suppose we settle the financial liability by paying cash. Suppose the holder wants cash. Financial liability to bank. Suppose the holder wants shares. Suppose the holder wants shares or we issue shares. Then the liability account debit to share capital to securities premium. And whatever is the balance left in equity account that we will transfer to securities premium account. Although the standard does not tell you which account you will credit to but normally we will transfer to securities premium or we can transfer to any other reserve also if there is any balance in equity account. Okay. If deferred tax is to be calculated because income tax act does not uh, deal with compound instrument. They still follow the old method of accounting. So this there will be a difference between the book value and the tax base. Book value and the tax base. So that will be covered by India S12. We will discuss separately. Any interest paid will be transferred to PNL account unless it can be capitalized. And how do you compute the interest here under amortized cost? Take the opening balance of financial liability and multiplied by IRR. Now we'll discuss the last part of the standard. Early redemption of financial liability. Early redemption of financial liability. Early redemption of financial liability. So usually the company may ask the holder that we want to redeem the financial liability before the due date. Okay. Now the question is if it is a compound instrument, if it is a compound instrument where the company decided to redeem it before the due date, company decided to redeem before the due date, how much amount will be adjusted in p and l account? and how much amount will be adjusted in equity let us see so difference between carrying amount suppose this is carrying amount of financial liability 1 lakh and suppose the amount paid to settle is 1 lakh 15,000 the company says take 1 lakh 15,000 and let us close our liability so what is the difference? The difference is 15,000. How that 15,000 will be treated? So 
तो फर्स्ट इज डिफरेंस इन द कैरिंग अमाउंट दिस इज माई कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी एंड रिवाइज कैरिंग अमाउंट बेस्ड ऑन बैलेंस कैश फ्लो एंड रिवाइज डिस्काउंट रेट तो आई विल कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ लाइबिलिटी अगेन बाय कैलकुलेटिंग प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ रिमेनिंग कैश फ्लो यूजिंग द डिस्काउंट रेट विच इज अवेलेबल ऑन द डेट ऑफ अर्ली रिडमशन I will recalculate the value of liability using the revised discount rate, which is available on the date of redemption. Suppose this revised liability comes to suppose revised liability comes to one lakh five thousand. Based on revised discount rate, my liability comes to one lakh five thousand. So this difference of five thousand. what will i do this difference of 5000 is the gain or loss on remeasurement of liability and it will be transferred to pnl account it will be transferred to pnl account but what about this difference 1 lakh like 5000 and 1 lakh like 15000 difference in the revised carrying amount means 1 lakh like 5000 on balance cash flow and revised discount rate versus the amount paid 1 lakh 15000 difference between the revised value of liability and the amount paid it is called gain or loss on settlement and it will be adjusted within equity sir why it is adjusted within equity if i adjust it within pnl account it will amount to remeasuring equity and remeasurement of equity is not allowed okay that is why the difference between the revised carrying amount of liability and the amount paid will be treated as adjustment in equity whatever is the balance left in equity now any balance left in equity account will be transferred to other component of equity balance left in equity account will be transferred to other component of equity next is accounting mismatch accounting mismatch means you have financial asset your financial liability suppose there is a company called silicon valley this is a company called silicon valley it has financial asset which are suppose based on floating rate and it has financial liability where the interest rate is fixed so there is an accounting mismatch there is an accounting mismatch there is an asset liability mismatch there is an asset liability mismatch if they follow if they follow amortized cost for this if they follow amortized cost for financial liability if they follow amortized cost for financial liability then the fair value of the liability will never go to pnl account but change in fair value of the asset will go to pnl account so pnl account will fluctuate So what the standard says to protect your pnl account this financial liability instead of classifying as amortized cost you classify it as fvtpl so that gain or loss on both the liability and the asset will hit the pnl account loss in one will be compensated by the gain in another and in that case a financial liability in order to correct the accounting mismatch can be classified as fvtpl suppose you are adopting indias for the first time indias for the first time indias 101 is applicable and the problem will arise in case of compound financial instrument because under old accounting standard 
there was no concept of compound financial instrument or split accounting but under indias if there is a compound financial instrument then you have to separate the liability portion and the equity portion so what i'll do first i'll find out what is the liability portion based on contractual cash flow whatever contractual cash flow is there i will find out that i will choose an appropriate discount rate on the date of transaction date of transition so contractual cash flow which is remaining versus the discount rate and i will be able to find out what will be the liability component of that compound financial instrument so i got the liability component of compound financial instrument but that instrument already has some book value that instrument already has some book value so old liability will be cancelled old liability debit to new liability as per in days 32 will be recorded and if there is any difference between the two then it will be adjusted in retained earning so this is the treatment on the date of transition that is when the entity applies in days for the first time what will you do with the compound financial instrument so dear student we have prepared one book called compiler what is compiler it contains question answer of all indias taken from study material rtp mtp past exam and some other good reference books also so in one place chapter wise you will get all question asked by the institute so this will help you in your preparation for your exam this can be used by ca student also cma student also and those who are preparing for ifrs exam they can also use this this is called compiler then there is another very good book i have prepared which is called financial reporting class note with solution this is one of the most amazing books that i have ever prepared it contains question answer and theory both in one book only compact will have only theory compiler will have only question and this class note with solution have theory plus question the answers are presented in exactly the same way we have taken in the classroom in fact we have taken the notebook of a student and we got it converted into a book so that large number of student can benefit from this class note with solution one stop solution for your fr requirement you don't need to refer any other book you don't need to buy any book if you have taken video lecture and if you find it too lengthy then this notes cover answers also it has taken almost two years to prepare this very high quality notes where we have also covered the answer as dictated in our classes so we have class note with solution we have compiler we have compact fr summary chart these books you can purchase from our website vino.in right now we are offering this book at 30% discount you can also purchase from our uh, web office located at prestige point first floor pune student of pune can come and purchase from our office also they can have a look at it if you want some sample pages you can ask our office staff and they will provide some sample pages also so you can email us on email id any information that you need if you want to purchase any book video lecture we have video lecture of other faculties also at a highly discounted price so email is asfoundation1@gmail.com you can call us our number is 9766921860 or you can call us at 9667671155 this is our whatsapp number also so i would request you to join our uh whatsapp group 
join our telegram channel instagram youtube channel and we will try to provide you maximum help that we can so with this thank you very much for watching this video please share with your friend also i hope you liked it thank you very much